Good afternoon, sir. Do you know why I pulled you over? Well, the radio's all good, so I guess you're just revenue collecting officer. Or perhaps just pulled him over because he's Marty. Goodbye, pork pie. It's like this. Um, we've ascended it to this uh, godly state of New Zealand cinema because it was a landmark film. Um, yeah. It really captured New Zealand at the time. It was also a massive stepping stone for New Zealand cinema. Uh, why remake it? Um, yeah, a lot of people ask that question. Um, well, I guess it, it came out of the blue for me, actually. Like, I was looking around for a film pro project and a producer proposed the idea of either a remake or a sequel to Pork Pie. Um, and so I thought, well, actually, it's got a, it's got a really, it's got a pretty compelling or nice core plot, and I felt that it could translate, and that was kind of the seed of it, really. It was really just about an idea of making a, an entertaining movie, entertaining Kiwi movie. Um, so it wasn't really anything to do with trying to replace or redo the original film. It was more about, well, here's some source material, cultural of it from our culture. Um, that we could tap into and quite close to me personally because I dad obviously made the original and, and I worked on it as a as a teenager um, Yeah, it felt like something we could tap into and reinvent something new for a um, couple of generations that possibly haven't seen Goodbye Pork Pie the original film. This is your feature debut as well um, yep. Is that more pressure for you or do you think there'd be more pressure creating something um, creating something that didn't have that history? Um, yeah, I don't know. I've never really felt m massive pressure in terms of, I mean, I always like Steve Hansen, the All Black Coach's um, comment when he says something like, worries are wasted emotion. <laughs> you know, um, I just wanted, I just charged at it and just wanted to make the best film I could. And um, there's, a, there's a certain pressure to that, absolutely. But I didn't want the weight of expectation or, or legacy to, to sort of um, suffocate. The, the process, so I just really focused on on the craft. And so, would you say you had no worries while you were making this film? Not at all, but but not the sort of pressure I think you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I think if I focused on that, you probably would trip up more. You know, um, worried about whether you're measuring up or anything like that. I just just had faith in in the peop myself and the people around me that we would make something that's um, entertaining, people would like. Yeah. How long did it take you to write? Uh, quite a while actually because I'd never written a screenplay and it actually wasn't my intention to do that initially. I, I started writing a treatment for it, some basic ideas and then while we were looking for writers I just got more and more absorbed in it and wrote the first draft and then I wrote the second draft and they were pretty terrible actually but um, <laughs> and I was fortunate to have um, people around me that ex you know gave me some advice and script editors looked at it and feedback and, and so it was a process of teaching myself to write a screenplay basically and then looking at, well, what's great about the original things that we want to tap into or refer to, and then what is the new story or the film that I'm actually making? Um, and it was it took about three years. Was it quite difficult to find um, a writer? It is in New Zealand, I think. I mean, there are some good, really good writers in New Zealand, but they're typically very busy. And, uh, you know, we were sort of doing things on spec to start with. So you, then you're asking for a writer to come on board for no, if not very little money. Um, so, and I was so passionate about it, I threw myself at it. And um, I had some, um, you know, some feedback and, and little contributions here and there from, from um, experienced writers, yeah. Um, now, Dino Gorman's character, John, he's, uh, he's quite the lovable loser sort of character. And yeah. James Rolston as Luke, he is, um, I saw him as the comedic straight man throughout yes. a lot of it. But who really interests me is um, Ashley Cummings' character, Kira. Yes. Because um, I'm, I'm trying to think back. I don't think we've ever seen a vegan kiwi on screen <laughs> uh, or even a vegetarian kiwi on screen. So what inspired her character? Um, uh, well, I mean, I think we wanted... One of the things that became apparent to me in writing the script is that... Um, uh, the energy within the mini. So you've got three characters within the, in the mini and you want, there's a certain amount of dramas made by conflict. So I wanted a strong female character, definitely. Someone that was passionate about um, their beliefs, her beliefs. Um, and so that kind of, 
I thought, well, she should have some sort of cause that's outside of what the other guys are trying to do. Um, so that kind of set that in motion. Um, you know, in the original, there were three characters, two guys and a girl, and that seemed to work quite nicely. So it was kind of just looking at, with, like you say, the, the lovable loser and the, and the slightly straight uh, guy that um, James plays, um, it made sense to have someone quite different um, in the female character. And um, Yeah, and I, I think uh, when I first thought of her character and, and wanted to sort of sum up the tone of the movie, I wrote the scene where, a scene where she joins the um, mini by basically quitting her job and climbing out of a window and into the car. Um, so she, yeah, she kind of has this um, adventurous spirit and um, uh, yeah, quite a lot of um, rebellious energy, yeah. Now the, um, I think the car action sequences are going to take some people by surprise because of how well handled they are. Um, what, was, what was the greatest challenge um, while doing all those sequences? Uh, the biggest challenge was really time. Because um, we, it's a, the, the biggest car chase is the Wellington car chase, which I think takes about seven minutes of the movie. Um, and we only had, I think, about four days over two weekends to shoot that. And of course, you've got to lock down places, streets in Lambton Quay and wait for it to be cleared and all that kind of stuff. So, and you've got a lot of shots in an action sequence and you've got to be safe and, at the same time. So the challenge was time and, and uh, my background uh, in TV commercials and car commercials and action um, thing, little commercials that I've done in the past. I've got a lot of, had a lot of tools to set that sequence up and I storyboarded every shot in it and I knew exactly what I was after. Um, and that made it a lot of fun. It was really like, now we can just focus on getting it really good. Yeah. Now with a lot of the comedy, um, how much of it was scripted and how much were you able to leave to um, improvisation? Because you got, you got um, quite a few um, great comedic um, actors on board, such as uh, Rita Tawaita and uh, yes. Thomas Sainsbury. Yes. So, um, how much did you leave to the? Um, how much did they stick to the script, and how much were they free to improvise? Um, there was no mandate ever to stick to the script. Often, obviously, often story-wise, it worked to st stick to the script. But I always let the guys gave them some room to keep the scene going, or change a line, or just um, throw in something different, definitely, to, to keep the energy fresh and, and um, like you referred to, exploit their talents as, as, as comedians. And definitely with Rima and especially Tom Sainsbury, <laughs> he um, brought plenty of his own lines to it, um, spare of the moment, which are incredibly funny. You guys are correct, because I almost blew his brains out for calling me Volgo. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, I saw that coming. But anyway. Say lovey. What's next for you? What do you want to do next? Um, I've been furiously sort of chipping away at three quite different ideas. Um, uh, and it's interesting, I'm sort of drawn to, uh, you know, we were talking before about Garth's film Lion. It immediately inspired me, I want to go and do a drama, you know. Um, having just come off, done an action comedy, I've got an idea floating around for another one, just because it's sort of fresh in my mind. But um, I'm quite, um, yeah, I think uh, straight drama was something that very much interests me, um, and action and comedy something that clearly that I've had fun doing al already. So something in those areas. Nothing, nothing booked or you know in in serious production at the moment. But yeah, would you want to write the drama yourself, or would you want to try and find um, a writer beforehand? Um, I think what I, what I'm planning to do is of is set up a treatment like a 20 page version of the story and then hopefully bring on someone else to write because it yeah cool. I don't want to wait three years to the next one <laughs> <laughs> last question yeah. and you might find this offensive but sure. um do are you at all interested in remaking more of your father's films um not really i and like i say that even this one was a bit of a surprise to me it wasn't yep. something that i that would have come to me occurred to me actually um, no, no, I don't have any plans for that. Because no. I've written some plans. Oh, um, right. There are five word treatments of potential sequels. Okay. I mean, can I try and convince you? Sure. Okay, cool. Um, the Quieter Earth, yep. which, which is 
The Quiet Earth, except it's a silent film. Okay. That's, yep, nice. That's I nice. Can see where you're going with that. Okay, cool. Uh, Never Say Die Another Day. Right. Which is um, a Timowera Morrison action uh, spy film. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll think about that one. Under Siege 3. Uh, yep. Yep. What uh, have you seen? Steven Seagal? Yes, that's the one. Oh, okay. Because yeah, no, he's, he's, been on, he's been on the boat in right. the first one, and he was yep. on a train in the second one. Yep. But he hasn't been on the plane yet. I think he's still going, Steven Seagal. So, yep, that's, that's, it. that's potential. Someone said to me the other day, what about Utu 2? <gasps> that, was, that was the fourth one, ah. U, U2, which, which would ah. be AU and the number 2. Nice one. U2. Yeah. No, I don't think I'll be making that one. But um, food for thought, definitely. Mm. I can write them. I, sure. I, yep. He said it. <laughs> he said I can write a film. We Thank you, Matt me. Murphy. Thank you, Matt. <laughs>